the African Utility Week studio. I'm Nicolette pombo editor of ESI Africa. Today I am with Dr. Sundaram from our TUV Rhineland, who is the CEO. Welcome, Dr. Sundaram. Thank you, Nicolette. Dr. Sundaram, I'd like to start with uh, the utility as a corporation. And you as the CEO of a very large corporation here in South Africa uh, will have some uh, insight as to how they should be uh, modifying their strategies. Uh, yes, well indeed, you know, today's scenario, the aging infrastructure need continuous investment and uh, it also needs to ensure the reliability when it is coming to a sustainable and continuous deliverables and value to their customer. So this is possible by focusing on quality, safety and environment. When you talk about quality, safety and environment, uh, you have to ensure whatever you produce, it is to the maximum level of quality. I think today everyone looks for the benchmarking the best uh, uh, from the industry. So you have to be the best to stay in the market and you have to ensure uh, the safety of your people, the safety uh, uh, issues around your equipment, what we use. Mm -hmm. On top of that, you have to make sure that even the environmental complaints are adequately addressed. So all these things are possible if you focus on the 4M. That 4M includes men, machine, material and methodology. So when you talk about men, the, the resource or the manpower what you use, they have adequate you know, training, experience and skill set to deliver the top uh, class work in their domain. And when you talk about the machine today, as I told you, most of the aged uh, infrastructures need upgradation. This upgradation needs an interface between hardware, softwares and interfaces. So that way people should focus more on upgrading their technology to stay on par with the global development. So you. In addition to that, everyone, today's uh, uh, scenario, you need to bring the operational excellence in, in, in your own value chain. This operational excellence are possible, as I told you, by focusing on men, machine, material, and methodology. One of the interesting topic or one of the interesting tool here, even the companies can try to implement Six Sigmas, wherein which you clearly identify the weak links in your process, focusing on the weak links, strengthening this, those weak links, bringing the best equipment uh, so by, by doing so you can improve the process output or throughput and you can bring more value to your customer on top of that uh, to, to have a, a six sigma in place you are also clearly defining what is the service level agreement when it is coming to uh, deliverables in your own value chain so starting from your business partner starting from your own raw material department to the dispatch department everything it is starting from the coal to the, the grid, the power, or what we drive from the home on, on a day-to-day -day basis, the whole value chain has to be included in this. Then we can bring the best to the industry, to the country, and the continent, of course, to the world. So operating as a business is so important for Yes, utility. operational excellence, bringing and stay on par with the global requirement, because some of the global regulation clearly states, maybe after three or four years, close to around 1,800 different chemical substances and few of the critical metals cannot be used because it has some risk in it. So people in the industry should be aware of this. So we wanted to produce, let's say, a polymer material, extensively use plasticizers to get better polymer uh, properties. But some of the plasticizers like diethyl hexyl phthalates, DBBs, these are all banned. Lead, for instance, it's extensively used in the industry, but though it's a carcinogenic nature substance, you can't use anymore. So if your technology is mainly depending on these type of uh, banned substances or these type of banned uh, materials, uh, you have to start focusing to stay on par with the things. Yeah. And today, uh, needless to say, greenhouse gases are the important topic everywhere. So we have been producing, we have been focusing on more throughputs, so we wanted to produce more product, and we have been focusing on next stage, produce a quality product. So now, now the, the mantra or the, the secret of the game is not only the production, not only the quality, you also have to ensure that you meet the environmental uh, regulations which is set by the global player as a whole. So you can't isolate yourself as an entity, as a continent or as a country. I think we have to play a fair game across the globe. So in, in that value chain, I think a very important aspect is around uh, the, the maintaining of the, the infrastructure and the assets. So what are the, uh, the, the quick wins that any utility can put in place to stay ahead of asset maintenance? Yeah, there is a clear difference between uh, asset maintenance, asset integrity and maintenance. Okay, or, or asset integrity management, AIM. So asset integrity management is the area where you clearly identify uh, your you know, value chain, where you clearly identify uh, uh, your uh, critical equipments or machineries or maybe the high temperature uh, process or high pressure uh, equipments. 
So in normal scenario, we go for a shutdown inspection. You stop the plant for a week or two, dismantle or do a conventional technique. So at the cost of your throughput or at the cost of your production, you will do this maintenance. But if you clearly maintain the data, if you clearly implement a system-based approach wherein which you clearly uh, check, evaluate on a regular interval, develop the data, identify where you really have the weak links, identify where the th machineries or component or process can work continuously. So those things can be uh, bifurcated. These things are possible, yes, I'm uh, having an asset. It has high risk at the moment, it has to be addressed. Yes, out of my asset, maybe out of 100 critical components or machineries or process equipments, maybe 20 needs immediate uh, attention. Then only those 20 can be uh, addressed in a way. So asset integrity management is a process wherein you bring the existing data. You also use advanced non-destructive techniques. You also use the experts to see, evol check, evaluate, and interpret the data available. Do uh, extra uh, investigation by using the uh, multidisciplinary expertise which comes with chemical, metallurgical, mechanical, environmental exposure and you have to see the flow characteristics, mass flow, heat transfers and so on. So by doing so, bring this, you can uh, do a thorough asset integrity management. This process clearly bring a value addition for our customer. So you can increase uh, the maximum outputs are possible because most of, let's say for power plants, most of the old power plants all working between 40 to 60 percent efficiency. So by improving the process, bringing some process optimization, adding some catalyst or adding some additional process which enhance your throughput, end of the day if you can increase your efficiency from 60 percent to 80 percent, because end of the day your input cost remain unchanged. But the throughput if you increase, let's say they can produce more electricity with 80 percent, I think it, 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 it brings value to the people. On top of that again, you know, uh, this also, this maintaining the asset, let's say you have a, a pressure equipment or you have a nuclear power plant or you have uh, a chemical unit as a whole, there a chemical process is going on, a high temperature is involved, highly corrosive environment. If you don't maintain this asset in a proper way, if you don't look into the critical areas, especially the joining uh, uh, metallurgy clearly states the well is the one in any of the uh, 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 technological part, it, it, is, it has a high uh, integrity level or high risk in it. So you have to ensure this brings safety for the customer. You can ensure the people work the environment and the people live around the community are safe by asset, clearly uh, maintaining your assets. So asset integrity management clearly brings value addition to our customer by increasing their throughputs, ensuring the safety, ensuring the environmental compliance, all in all. So, so from cradle to grave as well. Yes, then you're right. To, to cradle focus to grave. On, yes, on yes, yeah. quite a lot. Yes. And that then brings me to the question around uh, skills development. Uh, do we have the skills uh, to maintain these assets to that level? Uh, well, I think the skills are available, but it's not uh, in a you know you know in a in a bundled way, or it's not in a, in a in a more harmonized way. So a lot of skills are available at the university level, like to Rhineland focus more on the technology side. So to Rhineland with our uh, 140 plus year history, uh, we extensively engage ourselves in testing, inspection, and certification field. We also have a very good expertise to bring the technology available in the universities, transferring this technology to the industry. See, a lot of lab scale developments or a lot of research scale development, it has a very good uh, outputs. But when you have to transfer the lab scale development to industry scale development, you have to go through a very long process. This process need continuous uh, validations. It, this process need ensuring the quality, safety, environmental compliance to the people. So here, two friends play a vital role. We offer uh, asset integrity management solution for our customer, wherein which we be comprehensively bring our power plant experts or chemical experts, metallurgical experts, mechanical experts. So we also extensively work with the government. We also extensively work with the various stakeholders, uh, technology providers. So we play a vital role and we uh, uh, offer a turnkey solution for our customer when it is coming. As I told you, asset integrity management need a high level of expertise on chemical, metallurgical, mechanical, environmental, computational data analysis, analysis all these things. So to frame and with our uh, technical know-how in, uh, in the domain of like testing, inspection, and certification, where we clearly help our, our business partners to, to bridge the gap. Right. And, uh, skills development is, is something that um, we, we need to focus on all the time. If you've been in the industry for a long time, you still need to develop your skills because research and development is uh, ahead of us. And 
I'd like to then talk around what innovative trends can we look forward to uh, in this, this uh, utility sector? Well, I think South Africa also as a country at the moment, it needs a lot of uh, vocational skill development when it is coming to highly qualified welders, uh, technicians, uh, even at the high level things like, as I told you, metallurgical experts, mechanical experts, power plant experts, nuclear experts. So to Rhineland also, uh, the uh, other part of the world, already we are engaging with the industrial banks from Germany and various stakeholders uh, from the specific country where we operate. We always run a PPP model project where we transfer our know-hows to Friendland is willing to invest. It's not that we would like to only take it uh, uh, from the customer, we wanted to grow, no. We always believe in sustainable development where we operate, we would like to give something back. So our, uh, uh, you know, uh, givings to our customers or maybe the SME, small, medium entrepreneurs or the industrial communities, the know-how what we have, we are willing to cooperate. At the moment, uh, uh, due to the confidentiality, I'm unable to disclose, but we are discussing with the industrial bank in Germany and some of the industrial clusters uh, around uh, uh, Port Elizabeth to set up a joint technology center. This technology center will be funded by the, the, the institutions from Germany and Tufreiner will transfer its know-how. So we build a, a technology center and where in which we offer this kind of services to our customers and the students from the university can be part of this program. So of course, so it, it is possible if we all uh, uh, join hands together and we believe together we are strong. So you are a very strategic part of that value value chain. I'm so glad you mentioned PPPs. Yeah. Uh, this is the way to go, the model that needs to be used in, in all spheres. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Sandaram. Thank you so much, Ms. Nicolette, and looking forward. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for watching. This is Nicolette pombo editor of ESI Africa, coming to you from the African Utility Week studio.